I'm sitting here thinking um, of the Eisenhower years and Secretary Dulles telling East and Central Europe, revolt, rebel, and um, we'll be there to support you one way or another. Mm -hmm. And of course we weren't. Is using the new technologies, Twitter, Facebook, and so on, proactively, and maybe we're, that, that won't happen, but proactively by a Western government to upend a, a government, to get regime change, to uh, enable a new generation coming along, is this really not something we ought to do? Because how are we going to back it up? Um, it's a very tough question. Of course we ought to do it normatively, right? Uh, but to me, the disconnect between the internet freedom agenda and then the rest of the freedom agenda is kind of obvious. You know, the US, I mean, again, it, it depends on how we want to evaluate US foreign policy, but no one wanted to promote regime change in Egypt. Mm. Right? But now, when you promote internet freedom, you indirectly end up promoting it. Right? So, uh, it may be a good thing, uh, but, you know, uh, to me, this disconnect is kind of obvious. To me, I'd rather rein in uh, the non-digital parts of the U.S. foreign policy normally, rather than try to rein them in by uh, putting some idealistic internet freedom components on top and hoping that they will do the job. Right, so uh, again, yes, we have to be promoting the stalls and we have to be very proactive. But to me, the big question is how do you align these initiatives and these efforts to the rest of the foreign policy making, right? And uh, again, it's not just about promoting the stalls. I mean, there are many other things that need to be done. The role of American companies in this has to be scrutinized, not just Twitter and Facebook, but also companies that actually supply uh, technology of repression to many right. of these governments. Uh, now imagine what will happen uh, when uh, face recognition software becomes more ubiquitous, which will be probably a year or two down the road. Mm -hmm. You can actually very easily, you know, remember this example I gave from Iran where the government sure. took photos posted to Flickr and they posted them on the website asking people to identify if they can recognize any of the faces. I mean, next year there will be very, uh, you know, it will be very easy for them to take the photos from the protests, uh, run them through some software, and basically compare the photos of the, you know, the faces of the protesters with the party photos that protesters themselves uploaded to Facebook a year ago, right? Uh, and again, all of that is being made possible by advances in social media, and often this is done with our knowledge but often it's done without it, where yeah. again, we are seeing all sorts of tools uh, and technologies being developed which uh, facilitate repression. And uh, there is no coherence whatsoever in how our diplomacy uh, treats these companies. You know, on some days, the State Department uh, laments the fact that Cisco supplies uh, censorship technology to China, and on other days, the State Department gives Cisco an award for innovation. Uh, there is no consistency there whatsoever, and I think uh, there is also no consistency with how this, you know, the, the, the diplomats in Washington treat companies like Twitter and Facebook. As much as we respect their role in promoting the digital revolution, uh, both of those companies have refused to join uh, what's known as the Global Network Initiative, right. which is this industry-wide effort to sign up, to have technology companies sign up to certain commitments on freedom of expression and human rights. And you know, Facebook said, amazingly, that uh, they do not have the resources to pay the $250,000 fee uh, to join this effort. Well, when they have worth $50 billion. Uh, exactly, yeah. exactly. So uh, again, why should then the State Department be so cozy to the executives and founders of Twitter and Facebook and invite them to, you know, to dinners with Hillary Clinton. There are all sorts of inconsistencies here. And I think we just have to be very critical in terms of what we allow those companies to get away with.